Welcome to the final Black Knights Weekly of 2011. On this week's show, we'll talk with Army wrestling coach Joe Heskett. We'll also hit the court with Ella Ellis and Olivia Schretzman. But right now, here's what happened last week in Army athletics. On Friday night, the hockey team hosted Mercyhurst at Tate Rink. The Lakers jumped out to an early lead, scoring two quick goals in the first period. But Maurice Alvarez got Army on the board in the final stanza to make it a 2-1 game. The Black Knights had a power play and pulled their goalie in the final 82 seconds of regulation, but couldn't net the tying goal. The two teams finished up their weekend series Saturday night. This time, it was the Black Knights who scored two first-period goals. Mike Henderson notched his third goal of the season less than five minutes into the game. Later in the period, Mike Hull put Army up 2-0 on his fourth goal of the year. But Mercyhurst would tie everything up with a pair of power play goals in the second period. Marcel Alvarez answered with a power play goal of his own in the final stanza. The tally was his first of the year and gave Army a 3-2 lead. However, the Lakers forced overtime later in the period. Neither team scored in the extra session as the game ended in a tie. Rob Tadizak made 33 saves for the Black Knights. Saturday afternoon, the women's basketball team traveled down to Baltimore for a matchup with Loyola. The Black Knights rallied from a nine-point second-half deficit, but two turnovers in the final second stopped the Army comeback. Four Black Knights scored in double figures, led by Olivia Schretzman, who had 13 points. The game featured seven ties and ten lead changes. The Black Knights return home on Tuesday to take on Binghamton. Another Army comeback came up just short as the Bearcats escaped with a two-point win. The Black Knights trailed by nine with less than five minutes to play, but were able to cut it to one and have a chance to win the game on their final few possessions. Molly Yardley led Army with 11 points. In Saturday's game against Binghamton, the men's basketball team looked to end their recent road skid. After trailing by one with less than nine minutes to go in the first half, the Black Knights used an 18-1 run to take the lead for good. Army hit 11 of their 19 three-pointers in the win. Ella Ellis recorded his second 20-point performance of the season, finishing with a game-high 20. Senior Julian Simmons also scored in double figures, recording 14 points. The Black Knights were back on the road Wednesday night at Marist. The Red Foxes would score the final seven points of the game to take the win. Ellis and Simmons led the Black Knights, each scoring 13 points. Simmons also became the 27th player in Academy history to score 1,000 points in his career. The wrestling team headed west to Las Vegas for the 30th annual Cliff Keen Invitational. Freshman Scott Filbert and junior Jordan Tom advanced to the second day of action. 34 teams competed in this past weekend's event. On Thursday night, the Black Knights welcomed Hofstra to West Point. James Rafferty and Ryan Tompkins recorded wins for the Black Knights, but the pride left the banks of the Hudson with the victory. The swimming teams ventured to the Midwest to compete in the Zippy Invitational at the University of Akron. The men's team won the title, while the women's team finished fifth. Eamon Andrews won both the 100 and 200-yard butterfly events. The junior broke the academy record in the 100-yard butterfly during Saturday's prelims. Freshman Will Vienna placed second in the 200-yard backstroke, smashing an academy record in the process. On the women's side, Keely McNeary placed fifth in the 200-yard backstroke with the second fastest time in academy history. The diving team traveled to Princeton for the Big Al Invitational. Junior Chris Nguyen placed fourth off the one-meter board and fifth at three meters. A rowdy crowd was on hand Thursday night to witness this year's star meet between Army and Navy. However, it would be the mids winning the titles on both the men's and women's sides. Junior Alyssa Tran led the Black Knight women, winning the 50-yard freestyle and finishing second in the 100-yard butterfly. She also swam the second leg for the 200-yard medley relay team that broke an academy record. Dan Fokey won both the 50 and 100-yard freestyles on the men's side. The junior also swam the anchor leg for the 200-yard medley relay team, which smashed the previous school record time. On the boards, New Yen swept both diving events for the Black Knights. After this short break, Rich DeMarco goes one-on-one -on -one with Army wrestling coach Joe Heskett. We'll be right back. This is Scott Swanson, Director of Strength Conditioning, with our Surgex Training Tip of the Week. These are some fresh off the field workout drills that you can utilize in your daily training program and it helps take your fitness routine up a notch to train like an athlete. Sports are a great way to round out your workout program. And in real life, just like sports, you move in multiple directions. Speed and agility drills can help you move better in your daily life. Welcome back to Black Knights Weekly. Rich DeMarco joined by the head coach of the Army Wrestling Program in his second year, Joe Heskett. Black Knights have had a great start to the 2011-2012 season. And, Joe, we appreciate a few minutes. Oh, I appreciate it. Thank you. 
your second year, already a win over a ranked program, Iowa State. It's been just two years, but you've made some real progress with this program. Yeah, you know, it uh, starts out with fundamental building blocks, and uh, it, it starts with culture. And that was one of the things that we really looked deep into and uh, kind of started from the ground up who we are, what we're about. Uh, uh, we're leaders, we're, we're men, uh, we're warriors, and uh, it's all about the belief system. Uh, we have a build and belief philosophy with Army Wrestling, and uh, I think it really has, over the last year and a half, it has shaped up, and that's one of the reasons why we were able to take out Boston U and a traditional power like Iowa State, uh, where we're getting these young men to believe in themselves. A decorated collegiate career for you, Joe, the 165-pound national champion with Iowa State back in 2001, and then a coaching career. Uh, talk to you about your time in college and wrestling and, and how that maybe shaped you and, and taught you some lessons you've been able to take into the coaching realm. Well, I'm a big, uh, big guy uh, when it comes to sport life transference, and uh, there's so many invaluable, uh, intangible skills that you learn through sport that if properly uh, transferred, they can help you out in life. I've been very blessed. I was raised by my grandmother, uh, instilled solid morals and values, uh, and at the same time, the sport of wrestling has given me so many great opportunities, been able to travel the world, seen successes on the map, been around great people, uh, but at the end of the day, it's about giving back. And uh, the opportunity here at West Point is a chance to uh, give back uh, to the sport with young men who uh, dedicate their lives to something much bigger than sport, which is uh, very important to me. So finding that balance, but at the same day being able to mold and mentor young men who are passionate about wrestling but passionate about being great in life, uh, it's been a fun journey. And throughout Iowa State, learning those lessons and, and training for the Olympic Games and being part of the Cal Poly program and Ohio State program, it's, uh, it's really been a great path for me to, to kind of mold my perspective and my philosophies on how to build something great. Joe, you mentioned your upbringing and your philosophy, your perspective on things. It was an injury which led you to coaching. How were you able to take what was a negative, some might think could be a thing that maybe ends a career in that sport, and able to transfer your energy toward coaching? Well, you know, there, there's just it's really about lifestyles. It's about uh, uh, what you choose to do in life. And, and again, I have been around a lot of great people, and and my path was was set on being great. Was being great, not just in the sport of wrestling, but every day trying to improve myself and those those around me. And in 2007, I was the number one man on the Olympic ladder. Uh, I had just gotten back from the World Championships, had a great World Championships, uh, and I was seeing, you know, I was really believing that I was going to be an Olympic champion in 2008. But uh, through uh, you know events that I had had no control over you know I found out uh, a few days after the world championships that I was born with a rare heart condition that almost ended my life and uh, you know when you sit down and you think about something like that uh, there's a lot of excuses that you can throw in and uh, you know you can feel bad for yourself or you know the the other flip side to it is you deal with it you know there's certain circumstances you have no control over and uh, I've been you know throughout my life taught to deal with whatever you're you're confronted with so it is troublesome as it was you know when I found out that my career and that I still had a life I still had a family and uh, those are you know obviously very important to me so uh, again I take took that energy uh, that focus and now it comes to uh, to these young men and those around me and it's very important to me uh, that's why I'm here and that's why I felt so blessed to be uh, offered the job because my goal is to win with the right type of young man to build a program that stands for something and that the culture is impeccable and uh, it doesn't happen overnight um, as I said, I think one of the reasons we were off to such a great start is because we're getting these young men to believe in themselves. But as we recruit more and more talent and show the uh, wrestling world what the benefits are here at West Point, it's going to be uh, a fun, fun road. And Joe, you mentioned your family. How have they enjoyed, how have you enjoyed being not only with these great athletes as you talk about being at West Point, winning with the right kids, but also uh, being here at the academy and having that experience as well? Well, it's an unbelievable experience. I mean, I, I'm at the premier leadership institution in the world. Uh, my background's in leadership. I am around young men every single day that inspire me and that are going to go on and do such great things. And I think what I appreciate most is they've made a tremendous sacrifice uh, for their lives. And so as much as I focus on this sport in this room, we also talk about big picture stuff because uh, if there's anybody that understands, uh, you know, the big picture and, and thinking outside the box and, and being appreciative of life and, and 
each and every breath, it's myself. So uh, I really try to challenge these guys and, and keep in perspective, uh, them in perspective that, hey, wrestling's important. I want to give it my all. It's going to be uh, a great asset to me in, in hard times of my life. But at the end of the day, I'm going on to do something great, and I'm going to help other people. And uh, the more that we can uh, uh, really embrace that as an individual, uh, the, the sweeter life is. So I'm in a great situation. My family uh, uh, understands that and also uh, knows that they're in a great situation. So it's been a lot of fun. Well, Joe, we appreciate a few minutes here on Black Knights Weekly. Thanks again. Best of luck the rest of this 2011-2012 season. I do appreciate it. And thanks for all the support. I'd like to thank the administration and uh, uh, all, all their help and support, and obviously the cadets for all their hard work, not just the wrestlers, but the entire Corps and the professors and, and uh, TACs. Really do appreciate it. Well, that's Army Wrestling Coach Joe Heskett joining us here on Black Knights Weekly. I'm Rich DeMarco. We'll have more of the show coming up in just a moment. Now you can follow West Point and Army Athletics through social media like never before. On Facebook, West Point USMA and Army Black Knights. On Twitter, at West Point News and Army Athletics. And on YouTube, the West Point Channel and Army Athletics. Social media, your way to stay connected to West Point and Army Athletics anywhere at any time. Family ties run deep here at West Point, and those bonds are something that Olivia Schretzman knows very well. For high school seniors, choosing a college can be extremely stressful, but according to Schretzman, the decision was pretty easy. She says her heart was set on one place, the United States Military Academy. Originally in high school, I was set on West Point, and my parents kind of were like, you need to look other places, and I was like, eventually junior year, I said, Mom, Dad, this is what I want. Um, I've been a part of with West Pointers my whole life, my dad and my mom, and I just realized it was the right place for me. Shretzman's West Point roots begin with her parents. Her mom, Stacy, played basketball at the academy for two years and works in the admissions support office for the athletic department, while her dad, Charles, is a 1989 West Point graduate and is currently deployed in Afghanistan. Even though he is far away, Charles does an amazing job erasing those miles apart. He's got a really good communication over there. It's really developed. He's on Facebook. He uh, sends inspirational things to the players like Molly Yardley. And so he's definitely a part of the team and um, we can feel him here too. But Olivia isn't the only Shretzman in the Corps of Cadets. Her older brother Zach is a sophomore and a manager for the women's basketball team. Olivia says Zach helped her out even before she got to West Point. During his beast, he wrote me a 10-page what to do and what not to do. So coming in, I was definitely ready to, ready to go, and he's still my support. So um, we have a lot of fun. On the court, Shretzman has started every game this season and had a career-high 20 points against Columbia. Head coach Dave McGarity says he hasn't been surprised by the freshman's play this year. In all honesty, she's everything I thought she'd be. Um, you know, you, you, you always want her to play better. Um, she's been uh, a real... A pleasure to coach. She's been uh, a terrific teammate, and she's been a real what I what I would call a program uh, kid. I mean, she's just all about the team, all about winning, and um, she's got tremendous upside. I mean, I think she can only get better. Um, but you know, we saw that in her when we first started recruiting her when she was in tenth uh, grade. Shretzman is one of eight freshmen on the Black Knights roster. She says her class had one goal coming into their first season together. We kind of just realized we wanted to make it um, something that we would enjoy and have a good time. And with the upperclassmen, have been really good. So it's just been a lot of fun. And I think it shows on the court and it shows about our chemistry. So it's been really good. Coming up after this break, I go one on one with basketball player Ella Ellis. We'll be right back. Army hockey and basketball tickets are on sale now. West Point's Hollander Center is the place to be for all the action on the ice and hardwood. Season and individual game tickets are on sale now. Call 877-TIX-ARMY or go online at GoArmySports.com. You can also ask about group and youth team opportunities. That's Army hockey and basketball. Call 877-TIX-ARMY or log on to GoArmySports.com. Army hockey and basketball. It's more than just a game at West Point. Back on Black Knights Weekly, Rick Johnson now joined by Junior Ford from the Army men's basketball team, Ella Ellis. Ella, thank you so much for joining us on this week's Black Knights Weekly. Of course. Young season, young team. What's it been like here so far with the Black Knights here in 2011-2012? 
Uh, the first eight games definitely has been a lot of growing pains for our team. Uh, Coach Spiker is definitely experiencing, uh, experimenting with a lot of different lineups, seeing who can play where and who can defend where. Um, early on in the season, I mean, are we where we want to be right now? Definitely not. Um, a lot of games let slip away from us that we thought we could definitely have won. We didn't come up with wins because as players we didn't do what Coach put in, but we're definitely getting better every day in every game, and I'm very excited. What's it been like with not just so many freshmen, but also a lot of sophomores as well? They only have one year under their belt. What's it been like with so many young guys for you to try to be a, a leader to? Um, well, being a freshman, of course, when I first got here, I had a chance to help recruit a lot of the players that are here now. So I, I have a lot of experience with their personalities and how to deal with them individually. So it's not really hard for me to talk to and communicate with them, but it's definitely hard when you have, you know, sophomores and freshmen that make up about 60% of our team in practice when they're all being playful, how to lock them in, you know, how to get them ready. But for the most part, the, the freshmen that, and sophomores that have an impact on our team are doing a great job of staying focused in practice and staying focused in the game. And, you know, it's going well so far, and we're just expecting more leadership roles from them as time goes on. How is that youth maybe a positive for you guys? Do they bring kind of a newer energy to, the, to practicing games? Oh, they definitely bring a different type of energy. Um, I mean, I remember when I was a freshman, I had that kind of energy, and I think I let that get away from me as time went on you know, the wear and tear of West Point and just the basketball as a season, but seeing freshmen like Max Lennox and Mo Williams, you know, excited to come to practice, you know, basketball is what they're here for. Um, I just think that makes me, you know, give, feel like a little, feel a little younger. You put on a little bit of extra muscle in the off season. How has that helped you, uh, helped you now here in this season? Um, it definitely has helped a lot. Um, allowed me to finish a lot of baskets when I'm fouled. Allowed, allowed me to get to the basket when I need to get there for my team. So, I mean, it definitely was a, a road to get where I am right now, and I'm still a far away from where Coach Spiker and his staff want me to be, but I'm happy where I am right, right now maintaining it. Has it given you a certain confidence, maybe a new level of confidence for you out on the court? Most definitely. All right, Ella, two quick questions to finish up. First up, what's uh, one pregame ritual that you have that you have to do before any game? <laughs> well, last year when Jeremy Hentz was here, me and Jeremy Hentz used to listen to Fly by Nicki Minaj and Super <laughs> before every game, and now that he's gone, I don't have anybody to do that with. But um, I definitely listen to Fly by Nicki Minaj before every game and now Super Bass because I love that song. So. And secondly, what does it mean uh, to you to be a men's basketball player here at West Point? Well, I've, I've been through a lot of struggles since my freshman year, um, and it definitely means everything to me to be here and to, to still be a part of this team. Coach Sparker and his staff has done a lot with me since I've been here on and off the court, probably more off the court than anything, which is probably hard to believe. But um, I've, I've been able to travel, you know, meet different people. A lot of my friends are other core squad athletes, and we support each other. My best friends are on other core squad teams, and I think, you know, the bond that I've made with um, my teammates and my brothers on this team is amazing. So. Ella, thanks for your time and good luck with the rest of the season. Thank you. That's Ella Ellis from the Army men's basketball team. We'll have this week's weekend preview right after this break. Join the Army A Club today and support cadet athletes 12 months a year. Members of the A Club receive priority consideration for parking, seat locations, pregame hospitality, as well as Army Navy tickets. But the benefits don't stop there. The A Club also gives members access to special receptions and events throughout the year. To join, visit the A-Club link at GoArmySports.com or call 845-938-2322. The Army A-Club, supporting cadet athletes. Saturday afternoon, the football teams of Army and Navy will meet for the 112th time. This year, the game will be played at FedEx Field, just outside Washington, D.C. Head coach Rich Ellerson says his team needs to stay focused on the mids. They're an efficient outfit. They, they have a system, they have a style of play, they know how to complement it, um, as do we. And, uh, um, uh, you know, I think at the end of the day, we're, we're going to be concerned with their football team. We're not going to be concerned with the environment. We're not going to be concerned with the officials. We're not going to be concerned with the scoreboard. We're going to be concerned with who they are, what they're doing, how they're playing. And, uh, 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 and, and keep the focus there, we'll be fine. The men's basketball team will look to get back in the win column Saturday when they travel to LaSalle. Head coach Zach Spiker says his team had a defining performance against Marist. We set a standard of toughness and energy that, that uh, we're going to expect and demand from these guys because we saw it on display. And it put us in a game that many people thought we had no chance in. And uh, we now know that that is achievable. And these guys need to expect to play to that standard every day. And, and we'll be okay. Later on Saturday, the hockey team hits the road for a game against Holy Cross. 
Head coach Brian Riley says this is an important game on multiple levels. We're trying to approach it as uh, just like a one playoff game series. Uh, this is a game that we're going to live with for a couple weeks because when we get done with that game on Saturday, obviously the guys get ready for exams and uh, then they'll head home for Christmas. So uh, I think the attitude's been good and guys have been working hard. Obviously with a team like Holy Cross, uh, you have to be ready to work because they, they will challenge you to, uh, to try to outwork them. Saturday night, the women's basketball team will take on Penn inside the historic Palestra. It will also be a homecoming for head coach Dave McGarity, who is from Philadelphia. For me, it's it's a uh, you know it's a place that you know I grew up. Uh, you know the Palestra is, is was such a big deal to me. You know playing there in high school, and you know, I've coached there before on the men's side, um, and it's it really is. I mean, it's special for me because I'm going home to Philadelphia playing. You know, we, we've had some, some good luck playing at home. You know, we beat Drexel when we were in Philadelphia last time, but this will be my first time with, with West Point at, at, you know, at the Palestra. So Penn's very good. I mean, they're playing well. They're coming off a tough loss at Notre Dame, but other than that, they've had some great wins and they're much improved from last year. So that puts a wrap on this week's show. We'll see you in 2012. So long, everybody.